Hi everyone. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to draw a scatter plot in Excel and then how to format that graph so that it's appropriate for a scientific report or a manuscript. Different disciplines will have slightly different formatting requirements, but what I'm going to be showing you here would be roughly the standard for most biology journals. However, if you've got any doubts, look at the journal specifications or consult your module's practical documents. Now while Microsoft Excel is not the best software for drawing complex graphs, it's probably the most widely available program for visualizing data. Therefore in this video it will be the software we are using. The data that I'm going to be using to illustrate how we use Excel is this data set that comes from a paper by Schrader et al which has just recently been published in Global Ecology and Biogeography. The Part of their data set that we're going to use here shows island area in square kilometers, total species richness on each island, as well as, as well as tree species richness. Now to plot a scatter plot in Excel is quite straightforward. Let's start by just plotting island area versus total species richness for the Kuril Islands of Russia. You can see I've selected the data and then go to insert. Here you can see there is a charts component and I'm going to click on the scatter plot. And there it provides me with the relationship between island area and total species richness. If you were using data that is related, for example, if you were plotting how something changed through time, Maybe you'd want to use an option like this where you add a line connecting the dots. But for this plot, the islands are independent from each other, so that's the option we're going to use. And there you have your basic plot. Let's think about, though, how we clean this up to make it more appropriate for putting into a report or into a manuscript. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this empty circle and I'm going to drag it up and then release just to get the um, graph a bit stretched out vertically to give it a better look. Next, I'm going to remove this header that is not required and in fact not desired by journals. So you click on it, you can see it's now selected. I'm going to press delete and it's gone. Next, we need to add titles for the two axes. We do this by going to chart design and then by clicking on chart element we can then go down to axis titles and add a title for the x-axis and again for the y-axis we edit these simply by selecting them clicking on them if they need to be clicked on selecting them and typing in what we want as the axis title species richness is what we have in our y-axis so that's why we have that here and I'm going to also select that again go to the home tab and increase the font size finally I will drag it away a little bit from the numbers here to give it a bit of space let's repeat that here on the x-axis this is now island area measured in square kilometers Remember, it's essential to include units where appropriate. To neaten this up, I'm going to select that 2. Under the font option here, I'm clicking the expand arrow, and I'm changing that to superscript. There we go. You can see that now looks better. Again, what we'll do is we'll select that whole um, axis title, increase it to 12 font, drag it down a bit. So this graph now contains the essential information. There are a few other things we want to do to clean it up. First, let's remove these grid lines on the inside. Most scientific journals will not publish graphs with these grid lines, so we're going to remove them. I'm going to click once and then double click, and up comes Format Major Grid Lines. I simply change it to No, and it disappears. I'm going to do the same for the horizontal lines. There we go, change it to no line, and it's cleaned up. 
There are two other small things that we want to do here to clean this up. We want to add tick marks on the axes to show exactly where a value of 250 would be, or a value of 200. So somewhere on that y-axis, right-click, select the Format Axis option, go down to Tick Marks, Major Types, in other words, the major tick marks which are shown, and we'd like ticks on the outside. They're small, but you can see them there, and that then shows us exactly where 200 would be. We're going to do the same for our x-axis. Because we've got format axis open here, we can just click on it. We're going to, again, major type outside. The last thing that we want to think about here, in terms of tidying up this graph, is we see that here our island area values all have one decimal place, but that one decimal place doesn't vary. So let's get rid of that decimal place. We click on the numbers option here. Decimal places we simply change to zero. Close that. And now we've got a graph that looks pretty good. Let's think about one or two other options that we have. More advanced things that might be useful for you. Let's imagine we'd like to include, include the Mariana Islands or so. There's an easy way for us to do this. We click on any one of our data points and we can actually then drag our series longer. And there you go, you see we've now got a bunch of new points. Another thing that might be interesting for you is to add another set of data onto the same plot. Let's try this, for example, by adding tree species richness onto the same plot. The way to do this would be to right click on your plot and choose the select data option. Here you can see we've got total species richness. This already exists on our graph. We're then going to say we want to add. First thing we do is we tell it the series name, which here would be tree species richness. You see we click on it, we go back here, we click on the arrow, and it's recorded. The X values, that's easy, that's our island area. We select those. And then our Y values, that's going to be our tree species richness. So we select those also. You'll see we're not getting text here, but here it shows us what we have selected. We click OK, we click OK again, and there you go in orange, we've got tree species richness, which is obviously a component of total species richness. Now an important point here is that your reader won't know what the blue and the orange represents unless you tell them. So let's do that. We're going to click on the graph, we're going to go to chart design, and we're going to go to add chart element again. And look here, we've got legend. I'm going to choose to put it on the right hand side, and there it shows us that our blue dots represent total species richness, and our orange dots represent tree species richness. Now one of the things that you might want to do here is see what is the overall pattern within the blue dots or the orange dots. And to do that, we're going to add a trend line. Simplest way to do this is to right click on a data point. You go to add trend line here. This option bar pops up here. You've got lots to choose from. What I want going to do is I'm going to stick with a linear trend line. In other words, this represents the results from a linear regression and it tells us what the relationship is between species richness and island area. I am though going to change it to a solid line. To do that I'm going to click on this um, paint icon here. I'm going to go to dash type, change it to a solid line. And of course all of these options you can play with. You'll also note now that we have here on our legend um, information also showing that this is a linear trend line for total species richness. Good, that then covers the basics. 
I hope this will be useful to you. Remember that there's a lot of really good resources online that can teach you other tricks and can help you when you're having trouble drawing graphs in Excel. Good luck with it.